We got Tommy Ashley here with Inside Carolina. He covers the Tar Heels in the 24-7 Sports Network. We're going to talk about basketball. Tar Heels basketball is obviously a huge deal. Miami's coming off the Final Four team. A lot of excitement in the program. They're going to bring back three starters, lose the top two scores. But Miami should have a good team this year. North Carolina, you know, let's start with Caleb Love, moves on to Arizona. I, I just want to kind of get your take on that. They are bringing back RJ and Baycott there. We'll get into that. But just with Caleb kind of moving on, essentially life without Caleb and maybe what you expect and kind of a transition uh, in terms of what it's going to look like on the court for the Tar Heels. It's going to be different for sure, Chris. And I appreciate you having me talk Carolina basketball. I mean, Caleb was a fixture for three years, um, you know, made a lot of big shots, but he missed a lot of shots. And that chemistry on the court was um, evidently not as good as it needed to be at times. You could see it. And I think uh, the best thing for Caleb, and, and I think a lot of the fans during the season wanted him gone, um, but when he ultimately decided to leave and mutually parting of ways or however it was put, um, a lot of fans are sort of missing that aspect of it. But, you know, good luck to him. He's going to Steve Robinson in Arizona out there, um, former North Carolina assistant coach. So he'll he'll have some familiar love out there, and it'll be interesting to see how he does. But I think Carolina – will fare will fare well um with the replacements that they've put together in love's absence. And Tommy, you know, again outside looking in, it just feels like there's always been that talk with with the fit and, and with Caleb. And I know they get the national title run, but it felt like obviously, you know, that season, there were times where that season, you know, the, the losses were kind of adding up and a lot of scrutiny and just criticism, whatever it might have been. Um so yeah, moving on. But but uh, let's talk about what's coming back with with RJ and Armando, I like those two players. I think them at their best, it gives Tar Heels certainly a, a great chance of either winning the conference or having a really good season. But those two, maybe the combo, how those guys work together now that they're uh, the, the main two guys there for the Tar Heels. Yeah, it's certainly when we talk about the transfer portal and you talk about building a roster, I mean, what better way for Hubert Davis to build a roster than having an All-American at center and a lead guard um, that is an all-ACC type player. And that's what you have in RJ and Armando Baycott. Clearly, Baycott needs space on the floor to work. And last year we saw it. And for the most part, a lot of the first year, the Final Four run year, is that space was not there um, for whatever reason. Brady Manick gone. Pete Nance came in last year. Got kind of clogged. Baycott struggled at times, still put up great numbers. RJ Davis was a guy who he needed the ball in his hands um, but it always seemed to end up that they had the ball at the end of the shot clock needing to make a play. I think when you add in Elliot Cadeau, the reclass, um, one of the best point guard, passing point guards that has come out of high school in a while, it's going to help RJ. It's going to let RJ move off the ball and sort of uh, make plays rather than have to make a play every year, every time down the court. And then Baycott, it'll, it'll free him up to have some space in there. So I think those are the two pillars. I think Hubert Davis has done a great job putting complementary guys around them that I don't think they had last year with Pete Nance and even Caleb Love that we mentioned before. Well, let's stay with Elliot. He's a lot of fun to watch. Basketball fans, if you haven't seen him, check out his highlights with, with Cadeau there. Uh, the passing ability, he's, it's just a lot of fun to watch if you're a basketball fan. You like that passability. Maybe maybe you touched on his, his reclassification. Essentially, simply put, will he be ready for the college game? What's it going to kind of take for him? And Maybe what you expect from him in, in his freshman year. We've certainly seen a lot of good, uh, talented freshmen at the point guard spot have success. I'm just curious how you think Elliot will do and uh, maybe his impact in his first year. Well, they're certainly expecting it to be a big deal. He played for the Swedish national team, so he's got experience playing older guys. He is a little bit older. He's actually the age of a freshman that would be. So while he reclassed, he was an older – he would have been an older high school senior – so, you know, the the one concern with him is his size. He, he and R.J. Davis aren't going to be the biggest backcourt in the country by any means. So how will he stand up and, and be able to defend opponents, two guards or shoot or point guards? Because as we've seen, you know, in Miami at times has been a good example of that. But you've got bigger guards that you might score on one end, but you got to stop them on the other. So that'll be the challenge for Cadeau and R.J. Davis specifically. But Cadeau's passing ability. Carolina hadn't had a, a passing point guard like that since probably Kendall Marshall. And, and 
we saw how those offensives worked. Now, Hubert Davis is a completely different animal than Roy Williams, but the bottom line is Carolina wants to run, Carolina wants to space the floor, and Carolina wants to have a point guard that can create for others. And I think that's been lacking the last couple of years. I expect Cadeau to be good if he can stay healthy um, and figure out uh, the defensive end. I think his offense certainly speaks for himself, and he's certainly dynamic passing the basketball um, and I think he'll he'll blend right in with this team. And if any of the preseason you know, reports are accurate, then he's certainly meshing well already. You touched on the, the smaller backcourt. Miami has that too. They're going to go Nigel Pack, uh, Bensley Joseph, as it's projected, about six foot six one, a couple of natural point guards. So Miami's going to be a little smaller in the backcourt as well. Uh, the, North Carolina gets a couple transfers in. I'm curious, do you, you slot them essentially at the three and four with Harrison Ingram and, and Jalen Withers, a, a guy Miami fans have seen out of Louisville, but is it essentially that that simple as plug and play those guys in the starting five, or do you see maybe position battle? How do you kind of project the starting five at this point, you know, a few months away from the season starting? Yeah, I mean, obviously, RJ and Baycott are going to start and play a ton of minutes. I, I think uh, Elliot Cadeau starts, ultimately, uh, alongside RJ. I think Cormac Ryan, the Notre Dame transfer, is a guy that's really played well in the preseason. He's a tough guy. North Carolina fans remember him. Uh, he scored points for Stanford against Carolina years ago, and then, of course, he played for Notre Dame. Um, I, he is a tough, fiery player that North Carolina needs. Got a little bit of an edge to him. Uh, that's always a good thing. Those are the type of players I love to see. Uh, you don't take any junk on the court. You play tough. You play tough defense. And he can shoot the basketball. I think Withers is probably your sixth man at this point because I think Harrison Ingram out of Stanford is going to play. And I think he'll be the four point forward, another guy that can move the basketball and pass it. It's going to, you know, it doesn't matter who starts. RJ and Baycott are going to start for sure. Hubert Davis has said he's going to play the bench. <laughs> we'll see because he hasn't played the bench in two years. But I think if I'm picking a starting lineup right now, Chris, it's RJ, Elliot Cadeau, Cormac Ryan, Harrison Ingram, and Amando Baycott with Withers, Seth Trimble, Jalen Washington guys coming off the bench pretty quickly. And don't forget, Paxson Wojcik transferred from Brown. His dad's a former North Carolina assistant coach back under Matt Doherty. I, I think he is a player that can make some impact off the bench as well. Simply put, Tommy, again, months before season starts, but but the key, maybe a big key for, for North Carolina to have a successful season, to stay at the top at the ACC standings and compete for a, a league title, what do you think it is? Shooting the basketball. We saw it in uh, two years ago when when they made shots, they almost won the national championship and they were turned ankle away from the national championship. Uh, you know, when they didn't make shots, they were average at best. Last year, they didn't make shots all year. So they struggled mightily all season. I think Hubert Davis's number one goal in the offseason was getting shooters on this team. And while you look at numbers strictly on paper, the, the, the stats are not astronomical and they're not a whole lot better if you compare them. The bottom line is the way the offense is built, space is important and making open shots. If Carolina can make open shots this year, shoot 35%, 36% from three, then I think they're going to be just as good as they were when we talk about the glory days of North Carolina basketball. Because again, just like the football side of it in Chapel Hill, the talent is on hand. It's transitioning that talent to performance on the court. Roy Williams always said, it always looks better when the ball goes in the basket. Well, for North Carolina, it's imperative that it goes in the basket. Great stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tommy. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me, Chris.